Hello guys, Blagaga here, finally with another video. And today we're gonna look at probably the second last part about Raging Tempest. And there are so many new cards, some of them were just leaked today. So at the start we want to look at three new Black Luster Soldier cards. And as some of you might know, I made a whole video about the Black Luster Soldier and its problem and why it's not a competitive deck. Let's see if these three new cards will change that. So first of all we have a card called Envoy of Chaos. It's a warrior level 4, it has 1500 attack, 0 defense and it says the following effect. During either player's battle phase you can discard this card then target one black cluster soldier monster or Gaia the fierce knight monster you control. It gains 1500 attack until the end of the turn. This turn any monster that battles it has its attack becomes its original attack during the damage calculation only. And then the second effect is during the end phase if this card is in your graveyard you can banish one light and one dark monster from your graveyard add this card from your graveyard to your hand. This is obviously pretty good with the chibi knights because if they are banished you can search spell cards and the ritual monster and it helps a little bit against upcoming decks but still it's not strong enough against Utopia the Lightning. But it's okay, especially its level and its attribute are also good because that means you can use it for ritualism. Next we have the ritual spell card, a new one, and it's called Super Soldier Origin. This card can be used to ritual summon any Black Luster Soldier ritual monster, which is, which is really good. Uh, you can only activate one Super Soldier Origin once per turn. Send to the graveyard two monsters whose total levels are equal to 8, one from your hand and one from the deck, either of them light or one of them dark. And ritual summon one black cluster soldier ritual monster from your hand or graveyard after that. So first of all, you can summon your black cluster soldier ritual monsters from your graveyard, which is really strong. And then again, you only need one card in your hand or on the field and one from the deck, which is pretty good because you can build up field presence and you can also ritual summon monsters that you discarded for a ritual summon of another black luster soldier monster. For example you summon the super soldier with by discarding the old ritual. You can summon the ritual from the graveyard with this card. So this is a really good card. I have to give, give Konami credits for this. It's not a level 8 Gaia that I was begging for but it's it kind of fixes the problem because it lets you summon a ritual monster with, with with a really low resource count. So that's really good. That helps OTKing, that fixes a few problems that the deck has. And last but not least, a trap card was, was just leaked today. It's called The Beginning. And it's a normal trap card. You can only activate one The Beginning once per turn. Reveal three warrior type monsters from your deck including at least one black luster soldier monster or Gaia the fierce knight monster and your opponent chooses one of them at random and if it's a black luster soldier monster or Gaia the fierce knight monster add it to your hand and send the other cards to the graveyard. If it isn't send all of them to the graveyard. This is actually a pretty damn interesting card because you can send for example the ritual monster and two of the chibi knights to the graveyard, all of them. And then you can activate a new ritual spell card and you can summon um, them. Also you can send, for example, the black cluster soldier or the Gaia the fierce knight monster to the graveyard. Now there's still one problem remaining. We don't have a level 1 monster, the Gaia the fierce knight level 1 monster or level 8 monster. So you need to play somehow the Karibos. You need a level 1 monster somehow, but we don't have a level 1 monster in the deck. And that is like the biggest flaw that the deck currently has. It's need, it really needs this level 1 monster because then you can do certain shenanigans. If you could send a Karibo to the graveyard, you can could use potentially the Karibo and one of the Black Lust, uh, of one of the Gaia the Fierce Knight monsters to banish them from the graveyard. So you only need a ritual spell in your hand to actually ritual summon the monster from your graveyard. It's okay, but it's also not bound to an archetype. You could just 
used to play Cluster Soldier in your deck and then send two other warrior monsters that you want from your deck to the graveyard. That what is just a possibility that you have with a strap card. Now I was wondering if you could use this in Phantom Knight somehow, but I think it's too slow. Like all in all it's a trap card. It just makes it really bad. Like if this was a spell card I think it would see play, but the trap card it's probably the worst of all those three cards, but the ritual spell is pretty nice. It will definitely be a three of in the deck. So at least Konami tried to do something, but I'm still kind of disappointed that we didn't get a new ritual monster or a, a level 8 Gaia Fierce Knight monster. Yeah, that's just my opinion on those cards. But that's not everything for today, we have plenty of other cards to talk about. Next we have a really interesting gimmicky monster, it's a level 1 dark fiend type monster with the name All Consuming Clotten and has question mark attack and question mark defense. Can it be normal summon set must be special summon from your hand by banishing 5 or more cards from face down from your hand or your side on the feet. You never want to do this because you want the last effect. And or extra deck and cannot be special summoned by other ways. Now giving up a third of your extra deck seems harsh but the effect is kinda decent. This card gains 100 attack and defense for each banished face down card. So it gains stronger if your opponent or you use pot of desires. This card cannot be tripled or used as a material monster as a for fusion, synchro or xyz summon. So you cannot use it in monarchs for example as a quick special summon and tripled it. Or you cannot use it in synchro decks to go into formula synchron. Uh, once per turn if this card battles an opponent's monster during the start of the damage step you can banish that opponent's monster face down. Now it's only once per turn. So if they attack twice and they sacrifice one of their monsters during their turn, well, this card is gone. But banishing a monster face down is really strong, especially if it's a limited monster like Cosmo Dark Destroyer. They will never ever see this card again. Also it happens at the start of the damage step, that means the battle will not continue. This card will just banish an opponent's monster. So I think for every anti-deck that doesn't need the extra deck, this card is really strong. You can just use 15 cards in your extra deck that you would never use anyway. It's a decent card for such a deck. Then we have a new zombie card called White Princess. This is obviously Skull Servant support. It's level 3 light zombie type monster. It has 1600 attack. Pretty cute artwork by the way. This card's name becomes Skull Servant while it's in the graveyard. If this card is normal or special summoned, you can send one white prince from your deck to the graveyard, which then lets you send other monsters from your deck to the graveyard to increase the attack power of your of your king of the Skull Servants by a lot. I think it can be up to like 4000 if you do it the right way. And the third effect is a hand trap effect. By the way, this is generic. During either player's turn you can send this card from your hand or face up from your field to the graveyard. For the rest of the turn each monster currently on the field loses tech and defense equal to its level rank times 300. And because all those servants are really low level like level 1, 2 or 3, they lose not a lot. But like a level 8 monster loses 2400 attack and then it like a blue or white dragon only has like 600 attack left, that's like nearly nothing. And if you're playing with a low level deck, kind of like spirals, it could see play. I'm not gonna say it will see play, but it could be a decent side deck card against certain decks that use monsters with high levels. But obviously it doesn't work against XYZ monsters, that's a huge downside. To all of you who are familiar with the dual terminal lore, we have Tira, the Goddess of Rebirth, which is basically the new Sophia Goddess of Rebirth. It's a light fiend monster, it's level 11, it's 3400 attack, 3600 defense, cannot be normal summoned, set must be special summoned from your hand by shuffling 10 or more cards with different names from your hand or side on the feet into the main deck or extra deck and cannot be special summoned by other ways. The special summon of this card cannot be negated. If this card is special summoned, shuffle all other cards on the field in each player's hand in the graveyard and face up pendulum monsters in the expert deck 
into the deck. Cards and effects cannot be activated and so it spawns through the activation of this card effect. This is insane, but it's also really hard to get off. It's probably only gonna be a thing in synchro heavy decks with TG Hyper Librarian and Level Eater. And it's really devastating. Like, the only cards that are not shuffled back into the deck are banished cards. Which kinda makes sense if you think about Infernoids, but this is just a gimmicky card that you must have to build a whole deck around. Otherwise, this doesn't work, but it's mainly cool because it's of its artwork and the lore behind it. So that means that Inferno Chira is now the god of the dual terminal world and the ultimate evil that the other factions have to overcome. Also we have a new Inferno Void Trap card and it's called Void Madness and it has an absolutely crazy effect. So it's a normal trap card, send one void spell trap card from your hand or face up on your field to the graveyard. Special summon up to three infernal monsters whose total level equal eight from your deck, ignoring their summoning conditions. So you can summon the level four and two level threes, or you can summon the level four and three level twos. You could also summon one level eight, or you can summon the level one and the level seven. There are a lot of combinations and damn it, this card is insane. It gives you insane card advantage and the best thing is it, you ignore the summoning conditions. That means if you have a level 9 or level 10 already on the field and you activate this, you have tons of cards that you contribute to negate monster effects or spell and trap card effects. So suddenly a deck based around void cards isn't that bad anymore. This card is actually really really good. Then we got also a new carding card and I have to admit this card is actually pretty damn good. It's called Card Retrieval, it's a normal spell card and it fixes a lot of problems that the deck has. So target one flower cardian monster in your graveyard, add it to your hand, then you can special summon one flower cardian monster from your hand ignoring and summoning conditions. So basically you get your Matsu back from your graveyard, which is the main card that you want to get back and then you special summon from your hand one cardian ignoring the summon conditions without tributing another monster like the other spell card which is not good at all. And if this card is sent to the graveyard by a card effect of a flower cardian monster you can activate, excavate the top 5 card of the deck and add one spell trap card from your deck to your hand. Return the other cards to the top of the deck in any order. Yes, this is so good. You can not only add cardian spell trap cards from your deck to your hand, any. That means that if this card is excavated, you can just add Hala Avasa from your deck to your head, which is probably the main card that you want. And then we talk about another Cardian card. And this is their boss monster. This is Cardian Goku and I was waiting for this because the guy in the anime who played Cardians used it. And I just was waiting and I thought, wow, this card is insane. It has 5,000 attack, it has zero defense, but 5,000 attack. It's a level 10 dark value type synchro monster and rise as synchro materials one tuner and four and more non-tuner monsters. And by the way, this card is generic. So once per turn during either player's turn, if your opponent activates spell or trap card, you can negate that activation or destroy that card. That's already good. A flower cannon monster you control its battles, so not only this card. An opponent's monster negate that opponent's monster's effect during the battle phase. This is really strong against floating cards. And the last effect, if the Synchro Summon card is destroyed by battle or if the Synchro Summon card leaves the field by an opponent's card effect, you can special summon one Flower Cardian Synchro Monster from your extra deck, except Flower Cardian 5 cards. So what you want to do in Cardians now is summon this turn 1, then summon Akush Amoshiku, I think it's its name, the 3000 attack monster. And then this card also cannot be targeted and destroyed as long as, long as the other one is on the field. And then summon the level 6. Because then this card also does piercing damage. And I think Cardians are decent with the two new cards. They are probably a rogue tier deck. It's not competitive, it has too many problems, but this card is a win condition on its own and it really makes the deck much more aggressive. This is actually legit really good support. Then we have the XYZ monster, Heavy Freight Train Iron Wolf. This was used in the anime by the way. It has 2200 attack and 2200 defense. It's a rank 4 earth machine type XYZ monster. It requires 2 level 4 machine type monsters. 
Was per turn you could attach one X or Z material from this card, then you could target one machine type monster you control. During this turn, other monsters cannot attack, but this monster can attack direct. It's okay to get some damage in, but to be honest, not that good. But you can target itself, so. If this card in your possession is destroyed by an opponent's card, by battle or by card effect, you can target one level 4 machine type monster in your graveyard, add it back to your hand. So you can add your rough and rail card after it's searched one of your other trains back to your hand to search again. That's okay. It's not the best card, but it could see play in some level 4 machine type decks, kind of like Ancient Gear, just to have a monster that can attack directly, kind of like a Nightmare Shark effect. That's probably like the main use of this card. And then we have a new E-Spirit card. This is the probably like the Peacock Princess. And it has 2500 attack, 3000 defense, is of course a ritual spirit level 8 wind type monster. And it has basically the same effect like the other ritual monster. And when it's summoned you can bounce up to 3 spell and trap cards your opponent controls with the hand, that effect doesn't target. Although it doesn't matter that much. And when it's summoned you can also special one level 4 spirit monster from your deck, ignore it. It's summoning conditions which is really strong, summoning it from the deck and it returns also to the hand at the end of the turn and special summons two tokens. And they have 1500 attack and 1500 defense. It's definitely a good card but I wish there was another ritual spell for the deck because that's basically the biggest problem that the deck at the current point has. But I know where the deck at the current point is going. The space around OTK and your opponent bouncing back all their cards to their hand and then just dealing a lot of damage in one turn, which the deck can definitely do. Like it, it can OTK if you have the right cards in your hand. So it's a, of course the, a really obvious card to be honest. Like if I would have guessed that's exactly what this card does. Maybe not the special summon from the deck, but it's exactly what we expected from the other virtual monster. And we're still not done. We have a new Marsh Spectre card. This is a Marsh Spectre trap card. It's called Marsh Specter Gust and lets you special summon one Marsh Specter monster from your Pendulum Zone. Maybe you can special summon Kirin from your Pendulum Zone this way to surprise your opponent or to search during your opponent's turn. I don't know. This It's definitely not a good card. It's like too random. And we're still not done. So the last but not least we have a new Shiranui card. It's called Shura Nui Supreme Saga, it has 3500 attack, it's a level 10 fired zombie type synchro monster and it requires one zombie type tuner and one or more non-tuner zombie type monsters. You can special summon one Shura Nui Supreme Saga once per turn. If this card is special summoned you can activate this effect, shuffle any number of your zombie type synchro monsters from your graveyard or that are banished back into the extra deck and then you can destroy the same amount of cards your opponent controls. And the second effect is if a zombie type monster you control would be destroyed by battle or by card effect you can banish one Shura Nui monster from your graveyard instead. Wow. This card is actually legit good. It destroys stuff, it has insane amount of tech. The only problem is to get this card out. But of course you want to summon this probably with the Spectral Sword in the graveyard and the level 8 Synchro Monster in your graveyard. Banish both and then summon this, destroy one card your opponent controls and then you just open the way for an OTK because it has 3500 attack. And I really like where Konami is going with this card because what I really hate is that this deck is just based around Omega. And its effect activates if this card is special summoned, not if it's synchro summoned. So, so if you can special summon this from your graveyard with Mizuki, you can activate this destruction effect again, which is really, really strong. So it's actually a pretty good card. You probably summon this in turn 2 or turn 3, but it's, it's definitely a good boss monster for the deck. But I wonder if you get the horse also as an additional... Shura Nui card, that would be awesome. Shura Nui horse, <laughs> would be funny. And last but not least, also a spiral card was leaked. We had the chance 
to vote for one of these four new cards. So you see at the top left corner the new league card, which is not even a spiral monster, but it supports the spiral archetype. But I will talk about the spirals if they are all leaked. At the current point, only one is known. I link it down in the description if you want to read the effect. But I cannot determine how strong this card is if you don't have the other card effects. I can just guess what the other cards are. But at the current point, I cannot determine how strong the new card really is. And that's why I want to wait. They said they want to leak it in one week. That was yesterday. So in six days, we know. Like next Tuesday, we know all the spiral cards. And I will then make a video about the new spiral cards. So um, let me know what you think about the new cards. I think there are some really interesting ones, especially the new Infernoid Trap card seems really good. Also the new Black Luster Soldier Ritual Spell, I'm really glad that we got this one. And also the new Cardian Synchro is really good. It won't help make Cardians tier 1, but it is definitely a good card. So if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like or sub to my channel. You know the channel is really small, so I really appreciate it if you want to support it. Till next time, bye.